Alrighty, it is 5.30. I will call the meeting to order. Uh, it works. I will start with a uh, roll call. Alder Person Belcher. Here. Alder Person Peterson. Here. Alder Person West. Present. Alder Person Decker is here. Alder Person Ramey is excused. Uh, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty, since we have quite a few guests here, I think we will do introductions. So uh, I will start. Uh, I'm Dean Decker, uh, Alder Person District 6, and Chair of the Committee. Jack Ross, District 8. Dean, uh, Dan Peterson, District 3. John Wenger, 2nd District. Uh, Nick Wormski, Marina Manager. Administrative Clerk, Stacy Wesseldag. Manager Heather Burke. Help City Engineering. Okay, we'll see. So what do you Jim Brown, live on 24th Street? Crystal Turnpaw, live on 24th Street. Peter Shalama, I live on 24th Street. Mary Message, 24th Street. Uh Jesse Fryer, of, of Croft, I live in Woodland Road. Debbie Brown, I live on 24th Street. <clears throat> Jim Beezer, I'm from LUFC. Uh, Joel Cole, CDPW Street Department. Rick Nye, DPW Motor Vehicle. Michael Miss Facilities Traffic, DPW. Liz Majera, City Attorney's Office. Kurt Temple, Assistant Police Chief for the City. Joe Curlin, DPW Parks, Forestry. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we will start out with the uh, approval of minutes from uh, June 11th. I move to approve. Second. Motion is made seconded. Any other discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Show it's size. Those are approved. Uh, I'm going to do a little quick switch up on the uh, agenda. Uh, we, since we have some guests here, rather than have them sit around for the whole thing, and also uh, Joe, Joe Curlin would like to get up, who has one of them here. So we're going to start with number nine instead, and we'll come back to the other ones. So we'll start with uh, number nine discussion only, Catamaran Radiation. Explaining the Regatta special event. Um, so, Joe, do you want to take your heading? Uh, I'm going to take the one at least to start. Okay. Um, in the business office, we intake all special event requests for the city of Sheboygan. Late last fall, we received the Catamaran Racing Association of Wisconsin's request. They are proposing the use of King Park for a, their special event, which will involve um, requested tonight is the closure and use of the parking stalls along the east side, South 7th Street here for RV parking, as well as a portion of King Park located on the north end for camping. They also are proposing the use of the beach for the launching of their catamarans because these are smaller catamarans than the traditional ones we picture. So they are meant for beach launches. So they would drop them um, just south of the park here on the end of High Avenue, launch them there, and then park them overnight because they quite a bit of setup. So they would like to just use the beach overnight for that purpose. As far as the event itself, there are eight similar events within the state and nearby. Most of them do generally occur in park space, so this is not an uncommon thing. Um, similar communities that they have events with are Lake Mills, Wisconsin, Lake City, Minnesota, Pentonville, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, and Green Lake, Wisconsin, all use park facilities for their events. Um, I'm going to have Joe Curlin speak a little bit about the park use and Kurt Zempel about um, the use as it pertains to ordinances for the city. So Joe, why don't you go ahead and start us off? Yeah, I feel what they're asking. Um, I know there's some steps that need to be approved uh, probably through council but I think everything they're asking they're providing a, a very unique uh, event um, I do not see I still think the <laughs> park will be very accessible as always but it will also provide again that event where people can come in and watch so um, I, I don't I don't have any drawbacks to amendment. Um, I guess I'm, I'm a little surprised to hear that. I didn't think that it would be um, the position of the Parks Department that 
camping on grass, park and driving trailers and things like that, or parking on the grass in the park was really an appropriate use in the park. Um, we have issues with camping elsewhere in the city, and our concern is that um, you know, tents at a visible city park is going to um, set precedent. Um, I think the other thing is that if it's 10 or 15 boats um, all parked along the beach, you're essentially denying access to anyone else who's there to use the beach on a busy hot summer weekend. Um, and our ordinances prohibit all of these things, including, um, in addition to that, the parking of our easy camping overnight on city streets. And I think that this is why. And so our department is, um, I, I think that there are probably better locations for an event like this in the city um, that don't basically deny use of the park and set a precedent for um, uses that uh, I think under other circumstances would not be an appropriate way uh, to use the city facilities. Um, I guess, let's, can, can, do you happen to know what our, 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 our ordinance is? Did you, did we, we're not allowed to, we aren't allowed to camp in city parks and this would have to be a change in ordinance if we would do this even, wouldn't it? We have an ordinance that generally prohibits it unless it's part of a special event that's been approved by the Common Council. So the Council would have the authority by resolution to authorize this use um, if, it, if it desired to do that. And our office is prepared to draft a resolution that we could present to the body as a suspension and rules adoption at the next meeting to accommodate the tight timeline for this request, if that's what the body desires. Um, I would, I, I don't really know what the nature of the event is. So maybe if you could share some information about how the space would be used other than the camping and the parking. Um, so primarily, so my name is Jesse Fryer. I'm a representative of um, So Cameron Racing Association of Wisconsin, we call it CRAW as an acronym. <clears throat> um, so basically our boats are, are very small. They 15 feet long to 20 feet long, eight feet wide. So they're a little bit smaller um, in terms of size. You with the trailers, um, the trailers are really designed to fit just a small boat of that nature. Um, we're not dealing with anything large as far as trailers are concerned. We do need somewhere to go with the trailers. Usually they're disconnected at our events um, and park on the grass of some sort. Um, and they just stay there. Um, as far as the boats themselves, um, we could take one extreme of the park or the other, and we just kind of line the boats up on the beach, um, bring them in um, about 10, 15 feet on the beach, just so it, you know, if the waves and stuff like that don't uh, crash along the beach. Um, we're expecting anywhere between 10 to 15 boats for the weekend. Again, that's an estimate uh, based on other events. Um, our Two Rivers event, uh, which is the next event after uh, the proposed Sheboygan event, um, is our base event. There we usually have anywhere from 25 boats. Um, but as far as the use of the park is concerned, um, basically we'll, we'll just line the boats up. The boats get spun depending on the wind direction. Um, so if the wind is coming off the east, for example, they'll be spun around 180 degrees. Uh, kind of putting it into the wind, and then when, when they're ready to go off, we'll uh, go off a little bit, and then they'll go off in, in the water. Um, if the wind is coming out of the west, for example, um, they'll literally just be backed up, pushed into the lake, turned off about 90 degrees, and then the boats will just take off themselves. So there's no engine. Uh, the boats are engineless, um, completely sail power. Um, but yeah, I mean, if 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 um, we does Spot uh, along the beach, um, one extreme or the other. We are more than happy to stay in that area. Um, we do work with the public all the time at our events, um, as far as um, you know, allowing public access and stuff like that. We're not a, we're not necessarily requesting a full shutdown of the park. Part of what we do as an organization, especially when, um, like Two Rivers, is another good example. We do want people to come and uh, observe the boats. We do want people to observe the races. We do want to talk to people about the event uh, and bring awareness not only to the sport of sailing itself, um, but to the type of boats that we have. This isn't a boat that was normally seen along the coastline, away from Milwaukee all the way to Green Bay. Generally don't see this type of boat along this coastline. 
Um, the reason why King Park was picked, um, again, to address one of your concerns as, as far as the, uh, the venue itself, um, these bullets are designed to launch from a cage. They do have the capability to launch from a dock. However, when we look at the structure of Sheboygan, um, we spent a lot of time looking at Sheboygan itself. Um, there's the main uh, facility dock um, there at the waterfront. That poses challenges because, because the also have an engine, uh, we have to get through the cut of the marina. So depending on the wind direction and stuff like that, there's challenges there. The next available beach that is there is North Beach. Again, challenges. We, if we did launch from the dock, we'd have to go around the lighthouse and then come down to the beach. We would never be able to get the boats down the hill that uh, exists at North Beach. We also talked about uh, Kohler Terry Andrews State Park. Again, um, there's challenges there, uh, getting the reservations in place and then um, things of that nature. So really when we when we looked at Sheboygan as a whole, King Park was, was uh, identified as the most viable option that we would have. Um, it's flat land, it leads to, uh, there's, there's a nice beach, leads to the water. Um, and that kind of thing so um and would there be any security needs uh during your if you were to be granted permission would you be asking for any security needs not not directly so we we never we never asked any uh law enforcement agency for any direct security um that is one of the reasons why we do request uh access to the venue throughout the entire weekend of the event is because we do want to stay with the boats uh, the boats can run anywhere from, um, like my boat, for example, I have a little bit lower boat. Um, my boat runs from you know, $1,000 to some of the major, what I call race car boats. You know, the cost of those boats was $60,000. So we do ask that we are able to stay with the boats um, and, 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 you know, throughout the course of the event. So, but, but asking directly for security, uh, we've never done that at one of our events. That's not something generally that we do. Um, I would say standard procedure. We do have something that's coming across. We're, we're going to pick up the phone and, and dial for help, just like any, anybody else would. And my last question would be related to the camping activities themselves. Mm -hmm. If you would have the parking lane reserved for RV usage, mm -hmm. do you envision that entire stretch being used? Uh, what are you <clears throat> doing for waste management? So. So waste management, we do have the pavilion rented uh, for the weekend, which is what which is what the intention was for there. Um, a lot of the RVs or travel trailers do have their own, like, I mean, my RV has its own toilet so, and stuff like that. So um, between the pavilion itself and, and the RVs and travel trailers, that, that's where the waste management would come in to stay. Um, to the first question, I'm gonna say yes, because this will be the first annual event for Sheboygan of this. We do we do we do want to make it a you know annual event um, and have it as part of our regatta schedule. Um, until we get a better grasp of what the term is going to be, I, I'm going to say yes as far as use of the the, the entire parking lot there. So. Thank you. So I'm curious at other events that. You're expecting people to be using the beach and, and to not deny access to people who are down there using the beach. Um, what about people in the water when you're launching uh, the boats? So we are all, we're used to all that. So the beach that was in, so we, our first location for Two Rivers was the, was the Two River Beach. I think it's the Neosha Beach or I think that's my story. Yeah. Beach. So again, very similar beach. Um, in fact, it's bigger than King Park as far as the beach is concerned. We are well versed um, and, and very used to um, pedestrians um, and going around people. Um, um, we understand that there's children or other people in the water and stuff like that, especially when we launch and then come in. We generally try to uh, make ourselves extreme one way or the other, um, again, as far as the park. So if people are gathering to one side of the park, uh, we try to find you know an open hole to stay and stay a lot of. But we are very versed in working around the public and, and working on people that are, uh, you know, utilizing the park at the time. So. All righty. Um, well, 
I, I have some concerns a little bit with it. I, uh, I, the, um, I think that the camping is probably my biggest concern, to be honest with you, the camping in the park. Um, that's my biggest, I mean, if it, this was like in the, like the area parking area, we mean in the past, we've had a lot of, you know, campers and then we've done it for the, uh, the, um, sport races and things like that. You know, we've been use that, but generally for the most part, like in our, in really, I don't know of any other area of the city where we're walking on the streets. I don't know if this is going to be opened up a can of worms, uh, open up the rest. How, when did you apply for the permit for this? I believe it was last fall, I believe. Last fall? Uh, September 14th, 2020. So I guess my, a bit yeah. my concern is we're just hearing about this now. Yeah. And this could have come to us before now. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to decide by what, July 19th? Actually by yeah. July 19th through the 21st. So I guess in the future, it'd be nice to know this before now, yeah. a month out. Um, I agree with Alder Decker. The camping is an issue. Yeah. You want to set precedent here. <laughs> It, and we're open to suggestions. So, like, if you guys say no tent camping, right, we can work around that. Or, you know, in a real, if you allow us to park our RVs and stuff like that. Like, and one of the things that in my um, that I've done for the organization, I've said, like, you know, I've talked about the the establishments on A Street, and I've talked about some of the hotels that are around uh, the area. Uh, um, and we have members that get hotel rooms uh, for the, for the weekend. Um, so, you know, it, 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 I feel like there's options, right? Yeah. If, if it's the, if it's pitching a tent in the park, right, we, we can work around that. Yeah. I, unfortunately, a lot of the members do have RVs or travel trailers and that's, that's something that is, is group specific. So I'm more okay with RVs. Uh, I just yeah. don't want tent camping. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm concerned about tent camping in the park. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a... Would that be better if it was just RVs, or is it more like all of it? Well, we do have issues with people you know, staying in RVs in neighborhoods and things like that around. Sure. And, and so, again, I think there's a potential for a precedent there as well. Um, I think just two other things to mention from an ordinance sure. consideration. Um, one is, I believe, the request includes the for bonfires on the beach. So, so, so no, we are not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and... The second part is that, you know, our, our ordinance prohibits any watercraft on beaches in the city. Um, and I think our, I think the rationale for that is just the concern about having people on a beach or in the water and having watercraft coming from um, at the same time. So, I mean, it sounds like it's, it's been addressed elsewhere, but that's, that's why it's not permitted in the ordinance here. I mean, it, seem, it seems to me that if there's an exception in the ordinance for special events that we could probably work around kind of some, I know I, I respect your concerns, but I kind of like the idea of trying to promote this for the city. And, and uh, I guess if we can, if we can agree to RVs um, and write a special, you know, write a resolution and get, get that passed, I think I wouldn't have any problem with that at all. We could certainly draft a resolution that imposes certain conditions on use to reflect the committee's desires. John, your thoughts? Uh, I agree with Alderman Peterson. Um, I, I don't want to squash this idea or this event and um, and, and, and kill it out of um, you know uh, you know just some minor things. I don't I don't think the RV thing is that that big of a deal. Um, I, I'm not concerned about a precedent. We're not going to have RVs parking every weekend and stuff. I mean, we're going to make an exception. There's going to be a frame on it. So I'm not concerned by that at all. I am wondering why this is discussion only when we've got this tight front time frame. Why are we, why are we having something to vote on? You know, I just don't know why it's a discussion only with this tight window, this time frame. That was my choice because we did not have a communication with the event organizer. Um, in time for the agenda. We wanted to create an opportunity for this discussion without further delay. And we didn't know what the committee's desires would be with respect to 
discussion. So this allows us to have something as an agenda placeholder. So we keep it on track with this tight frame, and then we can present an action item to council at the next meeting. So that was that was my suggestion. That's fine. I um, I guess I, I do agree with all the rest of it. You know, this discussion could have happened like since this was brought brought to us in last fall, it could have been you know could have been brought to us in like in April or May, so we could have talked about this and, and then done it as a resolution. Know, earlier, so I, I would like in the future the same thing. I, I I totally agree with him on that. I think this should have been should have come to us sooner. So his, 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 I'll, I'll take responsibility for that. I apologize. So. So, I agree with everybody. I like I want this to happen. We're trying to build yeah. tourism in this city, but yeah, I I, I agree with uh, Pearson or Pearson Bellinger that people aren't going to be parking here all the time for RV, and if they are parking here, I would hope that our police officers would be willing to ticket them or communicate that with them that that's not an applicable state unless you have permission yeah, this was a, yeah. via park or us yeah I, I concur I think you know my only concern was the camping I really don't think camping in the park you know, so I, I would I mean uh, I, I I would support this without the tent camping if we could. You know, that's my biggest thing. I'm not a big, um, not too thrilled about having tent camping in the park. Mm -hmm. I think you leave the park open would be better. And so. make sure that, that that there's no fires on the beach or anything yeah. like that as well. Yeah, yeah just we, really, we just to really hone point that that's not. Yeah, we don't ever have like beach bonfires. Or, that's <clears> not <throat> part of our organization. That's not something. We do. Right. I'm just saying for future, if some another group comes, we can be like. No tent camping, no fires. We never make an exception for that. May I offer, or may I ask one question as far as when I'm working on this document? Uh, you had said that you have the pavilion reserved for the weekend, uh -huh. so we would probably want to incorporate a waiver of the hours of yes. usage limits on that. So then my question for you would be, what types of measures would, you organizing, would, would your organization implement to prevent other people from maybe squatting in the pavilion or causing disorder there? Would you just, would you have some type of monitoring plan or something like that that we could work in? Oh, we could develop one, yeah. Um, are they given a key? Can they lock it up at night? And they would be given a key. It's a key fob. Yeah. Okay, so if maybe it was maintained in a lock state after hours, and uh, then uh, yeah, that would be fine okay. for us. Yeah, absolutely. I think just to add a little more discussion, um, and for full disclosure, I'm a sailor also. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, but my concern is that you know you, you allow for one, then you yeah. have to be fair about that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when a jet a jet ski organization says we want to ride our jet skis up on the beach. Um, what's the answer going to be, and how do we get around um, that? You know that as a precedent. Um, I I think that I, you know I, I agree with you that the time frame is a little tight here, and there may be better locations for this in the city that don't have the same kind of draw that King Park does, um, and that um, might require a little bit more um, planning. And not that the city has to accept all the responsibility to provide the facilities for this event. There's a vacant field that Blue Harbor owns um, that has accommodated parking and things like that on private property, and there's a beach available there. You know, then you're not worried about park hours and trying to weed out who is and is from an enforcement standpoint. It's going to be impossible for us to enforce who, who does and doesn't belong in the park after hours that weekend. Um, and yet, if it's a private property, it's a authority. Um, it doesn't require a waiver of the ordinance of camping. Um, it, it's on private property. And it doesn't uh, the, the only issue then is is beach access for the watercraft. Um, and so again, I, I think you know I agree with you that it's it sounds like a cool event. Mm -hmm. um, having the opportunity to really determine where that's a fit in our community and for the facilities that we have and not um, essentially place the burden on the city to accommodate all of these things when clearly our ordinances are are written in a way that discourages this type of event. Um, where then do we stop saying yes? So, <clears throat> so it's your authority to make those exceptions. I guess my, my, my thought on that is, is that you know, like if it is like a jet ski, is something that would be 
and overnight they could they, they would be marked back off. They, they would be taken out taken out of the water. Whereas like this catamarans, I think it's it's, it's more it's more of an assembly thing. Correct. Right. Yeah. That, that's I guess the, 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 the difference. I guess being I mean, we're we're making exceptions because of the, because of because of the assembly and things like that is the only reason we're doing this. And then I guess that's going to have to be clear to any other group that would come along. Like, say, if it would be jet skis, I would say, yeah, you can do it, but you're going to have to pull them out of the water because we don't want to have them overnight on the beach like that. Okay. That would be my, my thought on it. You know. Just one, one yeah. more comment. Sure. Yeah. So Seas has uh, boats without motors as well that they launch from yeah. essentially the Yacht Club yeah. in the marina um, and, you know, seem to be able to maneuver. And, and I understand that, you know, it's, it's certainly – different type of mm -hmm. um, racing and event and visibility from that location. Um, but again, that's some of the so, are kind of geared for. It. Yeah, so the sonars over are, are a little bit more maneuverable in a narrow channel like that. Catamarans don't turn and they can't spin around uh, quickly like that. Our concern is the cut, right? So it, especially if we have to tack back and forth if the wind is coming out of the south, right? And we have to tack back and forth with the cut. A sonar is a little more narrow. It can do that. It has a little more room to play with. More centerline rudder. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. Well, uh, are there thoughts from anyone here? Well, maybe next year we can work with PD, or your yes. group can work with PD for maybe a better location. We'll work yes. with you this year. But um, maybe this fall, when you're thinking about doing this again, maybe work with. Mm -hmm. PD or legal, and we can maybe set you up with a better solution than than us doing this right now. Mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, and, and to be fair, um, I was not aware of the, the facilities that uh, Blue Harbor may have that may be able to offer us. So yeah, yeah. So I, I just and future food for thought. Thought. And I will say that this, we are we're, we're a committee of normally a committee of five. We went one absent today, so we're a committee of four. Uh, at the council meeting, there will be six other alders that will make this decision. So uh, even though we, we we may say we're we're for it, and we will you know we you know you, you are blessings to it. As far as that concerned, it does not necessarily mean that it will pass council. Mm -hmm. So understood. <laughs> All right. Thank All you. Right. I think I have enough for the okay. argument. <clears throat> okay. Great. All right. Thank you guys. Okay. We will move to number ten. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Little gold. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will work with I'll work with Steph and if we have any questions we'll be Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to number ten. Discussion only. What's in sports complex development? Okay. So as you probably yeah. know. We were we built soccer fields uh, and this eastern half of the, the Butson property. Mm -hmm. And in here where the farm buildings are, we started the process of building a parking lot. We were looking at uh, 287 parking stalls in there, along with subbing in sewer and water from out in the road. Um, sewer and water went in just fine as we Graded the parking lot. We found a lot of unsuitable soils for building a parking lot. Um, probably estimated it would cost another $140,000 to finish the parking lot as at what we designed. Um, if we tried to stay within budget, we probably would have went down to about 110 stalls. Um, so, given the questions. I went and talked to Administrator Bradley to ask for minutes on how to proceed. Um, he said he was working with other city staff and developers and the soccer club to come up with a full development for the project site. And because of that, he asked that we stop, stop construction, so everything, give, give the soccer club a flat site, but instead of a parking lot, it'll be grass. So in the end, we're we oh, it's hard to say we're saving eighty thousand dollars from contract value. 
So that was the update. Administrator Bradley asked me to pass along to this committee. Um, Would they still be able to park on that flat lot? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we did, we started the construction of a new driveway, wow, kind of in here sure. and right, I think right about here. So we built those driveways that are in, they're, they're going to pave them Monday. Okay. But the instead of the several thousand dollars to put the gravel in, it's just now going to be a nice flat grass parking lot. So that was Saving the update money. we wanted to pass along. Saving money is good. <coughs> Comments from anyone else? Any questions? Questions at all? Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Sure. I appreciate you keeping us up to date. Okay. All right, number eleven, the one everyone's here for. <laughs> Discussion only. Winter parking on South Twenty Third and South Twenty Fourth Street. Indiana Avenue to George Avenue. Uh, I'll start with just a, a brief comment. Is uh, I, I was requested by someone, uh, not from Street, someone who does be really, uh, to make comments. And I guess someone who does myself sometimes travel uh, 23rd Street, now 23rd, 22nd. Um, they, they, they do get narrow during the winter time. And the, the issue is, is, is if People wouldn't always, you know, the, the, the problem that we, you have is, is when during the daytime when parking is allowed on both sides of the street, people park on both sides and you have a very narrow way and the concern is is for the school buses that go to James Madison and on 24th and fire protection to be able to go down those streets, they actually become that narrow because there is no parkway on those streets. You're basically sidewalk three right there in the streets. So, uh, I know what I know, Joel. I know you've talked about it in the past. You know the, the, the thoughts about it. I know. You know. <laughs> so, uh, I'm willing to hear from. Uh, I guess if, if some of the neighbors would like have any have any vehicles and buses. Uh, we already had a bus sitting there. He couldn't get through, he couldn't back up because there were 10 cars behind him already from people going to drop off their kids at schools. And a bus sat there laying on his horn trying to get the person or persons out of their house to move their vehicle because he could not get through. And that's not, that's happened more than once. And it's kind of, I felt really bad for the driver. I mean, what do you do? You got kids on the bus and yes. And, and people, you know, and the problem is, you know, if, if I'm parking on the left side of 24th Street, I'm the driver. Well, I need to be a little ways away from the banks so I can get out of my vehicle instead of like doing the Duke's Hazard thing and jumping out the window. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but the, the thing is, so then you're out a little bit further, and then the people on the other side they have passengers, so they're parking a little bit further, and it's just ridiculous. Uh, something's got to be done about it. I we considered parking on one side uh, during the day. Uh, all the, uh, every 24 hours, everybody on one side for 24 hours, everybody on the other side for 24 hours, uh, except during snow emergency uh, times, winter. But uh, I don't know if that's uh, something that we want to look at or maybe the city wants to uh, give our street a little bit extra attention when it comes to uh, some pretty significant snowballs. Okay, I come up and remove all the snow on the right side. That would probably help. Uh, I don't know what else to say about to put it. it. You know, we get to a point. Yeah. There's yeah. only a handful of us, and we're pretty much in this room that do take the snow from the middle of the road, and we do our best to push it into our front yards. So, like with me, I have a disabled daughter. My driveway is at a bit of an angle, so it is safer, especially during the winter, to put my car on the street and load her in and out, and then put the wheelchair in the back. If that snow berm is sitting there, then I have to go out slightly more, which then puts me and her into a hazard because I'm sorry, there are assholes that drive up that street that they pay no attention to the speed mm. limit. They pay no attention to the one way street signs, you know? So I think if maybe we could do something with a snow, you guys used to do it. I've lived in that house 21 years now. You used to have someone would come up and plow just one side and that gave us all just that little extra room. We have people down at the bottom of the hill on 24th that they cannot park their truck no matter what they do. And she's always out. And then that creates a, ha a hazard. The people at the bottom of the hill on 23rd closer to Georgia, 
it has actually become impassable. We've actually had to call the police multiple times, try to drive around back up the hill. It's just yeah. something's got to give for your mirror, us. Your mirrors are almost touching the parked vehicle's mirrors when going down. Hopefully you won't slide into one or the other. And, or you're doing this down there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. On everything. They're, they're parked here, so you go this way, then they're parked here, then you go this way. Yeah, it's, it's a chore. And the streets are already narrow the way it is. So. Well, and when they were removing snow from our sides. There's an abundance, right? Well, yeah, when there's a lot of it, they remove it, but they only remove it on the one side. And on our side, they only go as far as the, city the city's building. And then the rest of us, we still got these mountains of snow. And when our neighbors have to park on our side, they have no place to go. They're, it's so, you know, there's so much of it. They're out in the roadway. Now, what was what was the gentleman that, that, that question, his, his question, uh, his thought was, was to do it like what they do on South 13th Street. Now, and, and the, which is 24 hours, it would be for the entire winter, one side street parking only. The issue that you will have with that, though, is, is that you won't have that side of the street does not get plowed. I don't know how, how do you handle that, Joel, when you, on, on a street like that? Well, I mean, <clears throat> it's not an efficient process. And, you know, it's, I agree with what they're saying. Mm -hmm. I have literally the same problems when we try to, like, go down that street with a plow during the day. Like I'll come over the hill and all of a sudden my driver will be like, uh-oh, oh, no, yeah. oh, yeah. I gotta do like back yeah. up the whole way. Yeah. You know, and, he, and he does. Yeah. So what they're describing is true. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the initial thought was, okay, do it like South 13th Street where you sure. have um, no parking on one side of the street uh, during winter hours of December 1st through April 30th. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and typically if you're gonna do that, you do that on your, left side of travel so if you're see so south 24 is south right yeah, yeah. South, yeah. so the no parking restriction would be on your left and you're going northbound on 23rd the parking restriction would then be on the west side which would kind of make sense because there's an alley so the people that are in that block do have an alley there. I know the people on the west side of 24th don't, um, and on the east side of 23rd don't. So, I mean, that may work. I think the challenges with, with that is if you're constantly parking on one side, it becomes very difficult for me to attempt to do any clearing whatsoever. On that side. And what happens is, like on South 13th Street, mm -hmm. I get calls from I say, hey, I moved my car. Can you come? You know, I'm like, well, and we, we try to accommodate that as much as we can, but it's a very inefficient process. Yeah. A lot of times, I, yeah, you know, it's a lot going on when yeah. doing that. So, um, it works, but I can tell you, yeah. I do get a ton of guys from residents of 13th Street, too, okay. the way that is. So, you know, maybe only during so emergency when there's a lot, then, well, that maybe I mean, they have the same issue with you as you guys do, you want to get on a terrace. <laughs> You know, so, um, you know, you're plowing a lot more material up onto the sidewalk that needs to be annually removed, right? Um, so they have that going on <coughs> as well. But, yes, obviously the more snow, the worse it is. Right. Here's another issue that was with the plowing. Uh, and I saw this a couple of times this year alone. <coughs> you park on, on, on the even side of the street on even days, correct? We've seen this more than once this year. So if you're parked on the even side, here the plow on the odd side, and he gets up the corner on Georgia, he makes a U-bangy and plows everybody in because now he's coming in. He doesn't he give anybody a chance to move their vehicles. And a lot of times it's not even a plow. It's one of those payloaders. It's, it's, it's yeah, a payloader, yeah. And it's at the same time, it's like he goes up one side, and then he goes the wrong way on the other side at the same time. There's no like time yeah. frame. I mean, I've, I've seen it already where you're supposed to be parked on the, on the right side. That's the side he comes through on. So everybody put their car on the right side, obeying the law, and they get plowed in. Yeah. So then our poor, poor neighbors, they're like, they're, now they're plowed in. 
he had no time to move over to our side. You know, it's like. So the alternate side parking regulation is not designed to be a situation where you are guaranteed not to be plowed in. You know, we think of back in the day, way before I was working here, but when we had the snow emergency, um, when they called a snow emergency, they'd plow one side of the street, you had one hour to move your car, and do that yeah, kind of thing, right? Yeah, they don't have that They anymore. don't have that anymore. Oh. We don't do that anymore. Oh, we don't, I didn't know that. Our, I mean, our staff's half of what it was back yeah, then. Yeah, and it's also hard, too. You can't. guys come through at 3 o'clock in the morning, and some of us are sleeping because we have kids. I'm not going to hear you, and I'm not going to want to get my fat ass up at 4 o'clock to go move a car. I'm sorry. There's not enough coffee in the right. world for that. <laughs> so while, while it would be very nice, yes, if we if we – could do it that way, but if you were to actually look at a map and try to do it that way, it's very inefficient. Like you, you would you would take double the time to get through the entire city. So, you know, it's unfortunately, it just doesn't work sometimes that way. But um, what's the budget the city look like to hire more drivers? Mm -hmm. Is it enough? I don't know. I'm <laughs> don't want to come to that. That's, that's why that's I don't. Question, <laughs> So basically, uh, I guess the, 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 the question is, is you know, do, do, do the, does you know, do, 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 do the residents want to try that all side of this, or do you, do you want to just, I mean, because if, if you do that, you know, it's going to be like a one-year trial basis, but I don't, it, it is going to be, I think, it's you aren't in the same situation as South 13th, or South 13th is a flat, straight shot. Your hills, which make things even more difficult. So. Well, then my question is: Is there going to be enough space on one side for everybody to park? The ones that don't have driveways. Is there going to be enough room for everybody? Well, overnight there has to be always is because you, you, know, you do the even odd anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, at night you're even odd anyways. You are. Really, there is only one side parking. So that's that is that way. So. Is there a lot of confusion as to People understanding what side of the street to park on, even days or not days? From a parking enforcement standpoint, no, there's not a lot of confusion. What we see most often appealed for those parking violations is that something prevented somebody from being able to timely move their car. Uh, they fell ill or, you know, something along those lines, and now they can't, they can't get down to do that. So one of, one of the suggestions that was discussed was just having one side designated as the parking side, that issue would allow a little bit more flexibility for the residents to not have to remember if life throws you a lemon. Um, but there are downsides to that as well. Because I thought maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea instead of having parking on the even side on even days, odd side on odd days, why don't you go by the year? Say on even years, everybody parks on the even side. I think that's what you brought up, right? I think it was year. once. What the well, entire we season. That's what you were saying about 13th Street. Except in the middle of the winter, you're switching. Yeah. Oh, you, you are. You know, in really. December into January, yeah, you're switching true. in the middle of the year. No. That's true. <clears throat> I think what Alder Decker was suggesting is that anything we do would be, you know, subject to review after the snow season to see if it worked, if there's some tweaks that could be made for future so we could establish a permanent solution. That's to be expected. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, could, you could have it where you can park on the even side on even years, even at, at the end of the year, and just have it maintained until the end of emergency parking. You only run that from December oh. to April. In other yeah, words. run it until right. April not, not 1st or April 15th. Right. Yeah, that would be managed. No parking signs along one side road, right. rather than trying to set a, a specific ordinance that carves out this unique scenario for just these two. I can guarantee you those right. signs will get buried pretty quick if we get a substantial amount of snow. You wouldn't even see those parking signs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there somewhere. You know. <laughs> can I just ask you a question? How many of the houses on these two streets uh, don't have their own driveway? Is it pretty significant? I mean, I'm looking at the map. The, actually, I don't see a, a lot. Not so, too many. But this is this is 20. 
lot of people have multiple vehicles and multiple people living in these houses. Some of them are rental uh, houses and, uh, yeah. and there's like five cars. Even if, even if, and that's a problem in my opinion. But I wish they had access to parking in the alley sometimes. But, you know, people between, you know, on the east side. And there's some people that have vehicles that are broke down and they got them in the driveway. So I don't play put their That's car the in the new drive. And there's a couple of houses like that. <laughs> Julie, sir. <laughs> not that not having to park in their drive is their own damn fault. You know? Fix it or ditch it. Yeah. Exactly. So I guess the, to, to bring it back, bring, bring it back in here, let's um, just get, get back on track. I guess, I, guess the, the, I guess the question for, I guess that this committee has is for the residents of the, that, that are here. I mean, this is a, your representative of, of some of the residents that are there. What would you what would be the the i i know that i know pete's idea would be would, would be a, a thought but it, it really i don't think it would be practical as far as having the 24 hour switch because you know you have to say uh, noon you're gonna switch sides that i i don't know how we would be able to practically do it even though it, it's a good thought but i don't know how it would practically be able to be done i thought you know by yeah. midnight till the following midnight would be yeah. you know on one side um, instead of having that six hour window where nobody's moving or doing anything anyways. Uh, and then as soon no. as people are allowed to park both sides, then the people are moving and parking. And, uh, but like maybe on the salt uh, 13th, if we would do it from December to winter parking rule season till April, try, okay, let's say next year, 2025, uh, that most of the winter parking rules would be from December until April. That's basically 2025. Do you want to try and have everybody park on one side? And then which would be the odd side because it's 2025 for those five months? Then you're switching signs you're every switching year. Then too. Every year. That's, yes, I, I think you would have to you'd have to pick a side, and that's what you'd have to. Yeah, because I think that might get more confusing to yeah, people. Right. I think you stick to, to one side. You would have and, to pick one side of yeah. the street that that's where it would be, okay. and that's that's the side of the street that there would be no parking on during winter. That's, that's and then they'll go from year to year. That's just that's the way it. it is. That's the way it is. You know, I wanted maybe more. I mean, so that more tickets. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are not being punished enough for parking like idiots. <laughs> And uh, I understand that there isn't enough law enforcement in some cases, but generally you'd only have to go up and down those streets right after a snowstorm or a couple of days after to make sure these people are parking decently. You know? So this bus doesn't sit there and he can't move because, like I said, 10 cars behind him and they're wondering why he isn't moving. <laughs> and, he can't, and he can't move without hitting a vehicle. Joel, from a traffic safety standpoint, is it safer to have parallel parking on the right side of your travel, like where your passengers would exit into the terrace or sidewalk than the opposite side? Yeah, you would want the, you would want, uh, you would want no parking on your left side okay. as you're driving. And with that, that would allow you to push the car closest to the snow bank for the driver to get out. Yeah, no. and then from a snow removal standpoint, is, is that also okay? Like, well, so snow removal is a little bit different. A lot of times if we're doing snow removal, we'll post temporary no parking. Um, we'll actually just put up temporary signs of, you know, if we need to get in there, we'll ask you to all move one side and then we'll do the other side the next night or whatever. Um, that that's would how be, we would do that. Especially after a you know, snowstorm. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that would prevent the city from following? I heard that you said so there's no terrace on the road. It just goes to yep. curb and then we'll sidewalk. The sidewalk yeah. Are there a lot of light posts and sign posts that would interfere with maybe mm -hmm. no, so no, 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 not, not on our no. street? No. no, there's just no sidewalk. Right here. Yeah, right we, have sidewalk. Yeah. we have what one street light? On yeah, and that's on somebody's property. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's on no. some, yeah. So one one thought that I have is if we do no parking on the left side of the street, and if there's a way we could do that with maybe just painting the curb instead of erecting signs on posts, then the snow plow could lift the snow at least off that initial curb line. And this then, is not even a curb. They're actually they're, they're, those sidewalks actually. It's a just a little curb. curb. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's almost like a driveway. Yes. Okay. 
for the use of partial snow removal by the city? Well, there, there, there can be. You know, it's kind of easy for me to say, oh yeah, we can do that. But then, <laughs> when when snow removal needs to happen, we have you know three, four days that we do businesses, and um, you know after a snow event, um, and oftentimes we don't have enough time until the next snow starts. You know, I mean, if it's a, a big blizzard and you have weeks of no more snow, then yes, we can we can try to attempt to do more of that there. Yeah. I mean, I remember over with Decker, we, a couple of years yeah. ago, we kind of had this discussion about sure. um, doing a little more uh, targeted type of um, plowing there. Yeah. And we, we tried plowing it with like one tons and stuff to try to, one of the biggest complaints was that we were pushing, or we weren't fairly distributing the snow from one side to the other, and it, it gets involved because, you know, depending on where the cars are parked and all that. Mm -hmm. So we use smaller trucks to try to not fling the snow so far up on everybody's yards and things. Well, I think that exaggerate, you know, causes some of the issues the, of the narrow the street because some of that snow is being left in the gutter of the, is, you know what I mean? Yes. And, That's right. You know, my ideal world, I would put my wing down and I'd go all the way to the edge of the sidewalk and you know, yeah. it is take it all right away. But you know, there's some concerns with that on you know wrecking private property and all that kind of stuff too. So right. Um, you know, so maybe if we, you know, depending on how the signage things works out, we can continue a little more targeted effort there. Um, but I say that with some caution because yeah. it's, you know, it's, 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 yeah. we know how it goes in the winter sometimes. Well, I could prepare documents that would limit parking to one side of the street and then leave the discretion to staff as far as how to mark that. Okay. With EPW and police working together on that. Would, is that, would, would that. would that be desirable to you guys to do the track for a year? One for side, see, what, see, see how, how it works. works. Not even and a year, it's a, just a one season. In other one words, season, yeah, right. one season. And see, once a year from now, you can say. Well, that was not good. <laughs> you know, another concern, I just want to throw it in there, but another sure. concern is um, sometimes it, it causes people that are walking, to, you know, the kids walking to school and everything, they end up going on the street because they can't, you know, pass through the, 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 pl the plow comes through and pushes all the snow on, the, on nothing personal, up on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. unintentionally, right after a person might have just got done cleaning the yeah. sidewalk. Oh, yeah. And so the kids are actually walking in the street and, yeah. Well, that's dangerous. I mean, that's, you know, you come the car and, and it's hard for them looking at her phone and pow. Well, at the end, you always want to try to keep it open for them, but it's hard. But it's a constant and war. For them, between, too, I mean, yeah. you know, you make your pass, you got to keep it open. It's a constant going, war you know? between the city and the, the people living here, you know. Some of the guys have like guys spotters are shoving it that sit there and yes, go, okay, 1409 is done. Let's go, people. You know? <laughs> okay, let's all listen then. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, Liz will do the ordinance for okay. the change. We'll make it. We'll, we'll, we'll try it for a year, and, we'll, right. and like I said, we'll, we'll go from there. All, all right. right. Good. Thank, thank, thank you guys for coming. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome to stay if you like, but you don't have. To. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You too. All right. Next time meeting at Frankie's. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for an old fashioned. Okay. <laughs> go to number six, uh, resolution number 30 2425, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract for repairs and improvements to the masonry exterior seals of the public library and authorizing an amendment to the 2024 budget to cover the cost. Move to approve. <laughs> <laughs> we did this last meeting. <laughs> I have a couple of questions actually. So, um, how is this different from what we discussed at the last meeting? Because wasn't there a similar resolution at the last meeting? I think it was the wrong account. Wrong account. Okay. The so account thing was wrong. Yeah. My, my other question is I read 180,000. Was that incorrect? And is that why th these minutes are amended? Or this agenda was amended? I saw somewhere $180,000. This agenda was simply amended to correct um, this discussion only on winter parking. Okay. That is correct from Indiana Budget to Georgia. 
That's all that. I read elsewhere ninety. So what's uh, so the ninety thousand what the bid? What we only, we only had one contractor bid on this project. We're so we on, budgeted one hundred and eighty. They bid ninety. Well, according. See, I was gonna ask, I was gonna ask also this, but I don't know what the original numbers number was. But I think it was an accounting thing, like what Heather said. It was one hundred fifty thousand dollars for this project, and it came in at ninety. Okay. So. Okay. And we only had one. We went out to mobile, obviously multiple contractors and stuff like that. We only had one come in. Okay. And obviously there was a little lower, lower swan. So our expenditure here is ninety thousand. Then it's not going to be the hundred and eighty that we so had the expenditure allocated. I think it's hundred. Oh, it's hundred. So the budget expenditure for this project is hundred fifty, and we got the first bid in at. Ninety thousand. Okay. So that's what we're asking for the committee to approve to to enter into contract work. So, and this is a multiple. Like I said, this is a multiple thing. With this LLC um, doing a building envelope part of the library, and we're actually looking in the future for doing uh, the roof next year. Okay. So. I don't know if the motion was seconded. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll uh, second it. If okay, that's say. fine. The motion's <laughs> made and seconded. For talking. That's fine. No, no, you're good. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Number seven, resolution number 24, 28, 24, 25, resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to purchase. Issue a purchase order for a 2024 bucket truck and accessories for the motor vehicle division of the Department of Public Works. This is Rick, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, again, as in other years, we're trying to, we're forcing us to pre buy vehicles because of the ex extremely long lead times. It really hasn't changed. They're still out 18 months to 24 months. All we're simply trying to do here is we're, we're getting some, some bids in advance where they're we happen to find a truck that should be on the ground in January. They say if we give it a letter of intent to commit, so to speak, we can they'll hold that truck for us. If it's out of the 2025 capital improvements, if come November or whenever the council decides, if the council were to decide not to approve that, we're not bound. We can get out of it, but they just want some type of uh, commitment that we are interested in that truck, so they hold it for us. Yeah, we've included an appropriations clause on that, and they were, the other party was good with it. Okay. I move to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion on it? All in favor? Okay. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay. Number eight. Correct for all. Resolution number 33-24-25. Resolution amending the marina and riverfront slip fees schedule. Sure. So uh, that is me. So like, I'll just go in order here. So the transient, it's just one that would be changed. We have not many, but it, we only have a couple steps, a couple that are not, they don't have power attached to them. So it would be a slightly lower rate for those that don't, that, are, that don't have power. Uh, I just, I had somebody complaining about it. It is kind of a good point. Um, you know, powers, I think it's about, I put it at $35 a day and that's, uh, 4375 is the next highest for the 25. So that was uh, one of the, the transient, the only one. Uh, the other one was a half season rate. I had a lot of people, a couple from the Yacht Club too, or we had some people who left or what have you, and they would like to come back. They're not not necessarily the Yacht Club, but we'll, we'll say wherever, um, but they want to come back and they were looking at half season. So for those, uh, and it seems to be quite common as far as uh, Lake Michigan, it is, they're quite literally just half the rate of what it was before. So. Um, my understanding is that that would start on July 15th, which would be half the season. So, um, July, August, September, or excuse me, August, September, October. So about three months, it's pretty it's half the season. And, uh, the other one I had was monthly rates. So I based the monthly rates off a transient rate, right? So I have an example. So a 40 foot transient rate is $70 a day. So 70 times based on the 30 days or one month, 30 is 2100 is what someone would pay on a transient, which is pretty, you know, it's a good chunk of change. So I went with, you know, 20 cent less. So we put them at for 40, um, 40 foot would put it at 1680 a month. Now I don't, I don't believe, and I don't think that it's good practice for you to, for, for marinas in general, excuse me, to go to, if it was, you know, a uh, thousand to go to like, whatever, like a quarter of the rate. It wouldn't make sense a quarter with the full season. Um, monthly rates are designed to encourage long-term stakeholders. Um, so where I stand, it's 
fair, especially there's there's also no un income after that month is over. You're not guaranteed that. So another reason why it's their my monthlies are higher, but it's still I think way cheaper than what you would be if you're on the transient uh, daily rate. Questions? Okay. Looking for more? I move to approve. Second. Motion made second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay. We have exhausted the agenda. Next meeting date is July 9th, 2024. Looking for a motion. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.